This is Michael DeSilvis for May the 18th, my blog. I think we need to stand up for our rights. I think we should do this as Christians because we are told in the Bible to question authority when authority is not doing right. As a matter of fact, Jesus said to question the Roman authority when they weren't doing right. He didn't tell us just to sit there cowardly and just let things happen. It's just like when you're at the workplace. You know, you don't have to. Uh, start quoting scriptures to Jesus down the hallway. But you need to start acting like Jesus even on the job. I don't care where you're at. You need to show that Jesus is in your heart. And show where Jesus is in your heart by demonstrating that on the job. And anywhere where you are. And stop being a coward by not showing it. That's what's happened to a lot of Christians today. And I think we've lost a lot of it. Because we have given up and sold ourselves to corporate America and forgot about her, our, our heritage and about what Jesus has told us to do. And that's to speak up and tell and question things that are wrong around us. The Bible teaches us. Christians didn't just stand down. Christians fought what was right. Christians are what established this country that we live in. Fine country we live in. They were behind this. The Christian men and women gave of their lives. For us. For you, for me and I. For all of us. You know, they don't want us just to stand down. You know, I was saying, you know, when I had an elder tell me at a church of Christ, said, no, we ought to just do what the government tells us, not to question what the authorities tell us we have no right. And I'm like thinking, you know, all the ancestors in the grave would roll over on something like that. Because we should not stand down. We've got a government that's ever more encroaching on our rights and overreaching in its power and authorities. That's where all true Christians should stand up and band together and actually go and through using the means of due process and information wars and tell the truth about what's going on. You know, why we have all these diseases going on an increase of 3,000%. Why are there so many women thinking it's so cool to get their breasts taken, get their breasts uh, cut off, to get, an, to get a disectamine, to remove their, have their breasts removed before they even have cancer, when their breasts a lot of times probably didn't have anything wrong with it in the first place. Because that's the new cool. Or like having sex with, you know, you know, having sex, you know, before we get married. That's a new cool. And it's not cool. It's wrong. You know, but they introduce all these things that way. To make it sound like it's right and it's okay. And it's not okay. That's what destroyed Rome. Remember Roman back, remember Roman captivity in Babylon? That's what destroyed uh, Europe when Hitler came on the scene. That's why he ended up getting killed. And see, that's what's going to happen to all these tyrants. See, a lot of these people that sit there and laugh <laughs> while all this stuff has happened because they think the New World Order has made them a promise. The, the elite made them a promise. Yeah, they told them a promise, but they lied to them. Because what happens to us, what they refer to as the peasants, which we are not the peasants, but that's how they refer to all of us as outside of the New World Order, is also going to happen to a lot of those freaks who are in the New World Order. Because whatever happens to us will happen to them eventually. Because there will be somebody more powerful that will take over them. And they'll destroy them. In fact, there's people killing people in the New World Order all the time because of that, right? They have supremacy and power and rule because it's all designed from the evil one. The devil's all behind all these details. And Satan, he's the dark force that runs this earth because God gave him that dominion. He gave him that right. But God also intervenes more than you'll ever know or I will ever know to stop a lot of things that God, that the devil does. And the devil doesn't like it. But that's the catch. God does and will continue to intervene as long as he needs to until he decides to end this madness one day, which he will, as promised in Scripture. As we know what it says, he'll come here and destroy the earth by fire. He's not going to come here and regenerate it like the Baptists teach or like non-denominational sometimes will teach it too. It's depending on what split you are off of. Now, when the world is destroyed by fire, it will totally be annihilated. There'll be no atmosphere. There'll be no plants. God's not going to regenerate something that's destroyed. Because nobody be, nobody's going to be here at that point. When the world is destroyed, the world will not support even the elitist human life. Because when it destroys that man, when God destroys it, there will be no life on it of any kind. The so life will be either in heaven or it will be in hell at this point because the judgment is already taking place. But before all that occurs, yeah, there will be people on the world up until the Lord decides to come back. The Bible even records that there'll be, there will be people on the world, not just the elite. But there will be a number of Christians that will survive all this horrible damnation. But they'll still be here living. And they will survive it when the world, when the world ends and the Lord comes back.
The Bible says there will be Christians that will still be living among the damned and the wicked, even when he returns. And that's in Scripture, folks. So when God makes a promise, he always keeps it. He doesn't change it like people do. And when he makes a promise, it's final. And see, that's what we need to, that's what we need to think about. Because that's really what our God does. So, you know, when you're in the workplace, show, show your Christian character through your examples. Show your Christian character through your, your decision making. And you know, if you come work for me to Silvis' Media, I don't have a problem with you expressing your religion as long as it doesn't interfere with your work performance or what you do for me. If you're reporting for me on things that are going on that are wrong or if you're working on a computer system or if you're going out taking photography for a wedding and I'm paying you to do that, commission to do that. You know, whatever you're doing for me, you know, I don't care if you talk about religion as long as the client brings it up first. But don't bring it up unless they bring it up, okay? That's very important because the client needs to bring it up, okay? And if they bring it up, then you can talk about it. But see, in other places like Walmart and other places like that, you can't do that because they say that's disharmony in the workplace. And of course, it's a lie from hell. So they just don't want people to be talking about religion. But if you get more tactful, you can talk about it freely and openly. Don't be afraid to express yourself. Don't be afraid to show God in what you're doing. Don't be like a lot of people like in Congress or other places where they're supposed to be Christians that don't even act nothing like it. You know, in government, we need to be transparent. We need to tell the truth. We need to express our truth. And everywhere, in any job we're at, even when we're working for Homeland Security or wherever we're at, we need to make sure God is also there with us. And everything that we're doing, and if we don't like something, we need to question it. We need to say, look, is this right that we do this to people? That we surveillance people on the telephone? Is it right that we put viruses or order that order to be given to kill people that are innocent, that have nothing, that they didn't even do anything wrong, but yet this order is being carried out? You know, these are things you need to to question because if you follow that order you're just as guilty as the person giving you the order so you can't say well god i was just following orders even though i had all those people annihilated with diseases by you know spraying it on them while they're sleeping or you know or injecting it to them through a shot or you know mutating the crops through sent monsantos and other companies that are behind that you know put bug spray and stuff to make it resistant from bugs but then it ends up killing people because it breaks down cells and things you know, there's been reports that showed this 20 years prior before they started doing this Einstein kind of, you know, plant science. You know, like they're messing around with nature. It wasn't in ways that it wasn't intended to be messed with. That's why, you know, they said don't, pro- don't cross-pollinate plants with insects. I mean, you don't have to be a chemist or a scientist to know it's just basic common sense that you know that this stuff is dangerous and that it should not be going on because there's horrible results that we're seeing where people are getting sick and where people are having immune diseases and disorders because of it and why people's intelligence are going down both men and women you know and why life expectancy for men and women instead of being 120 years is less than 80 years and of course they want it to be less than 30 years and yet it should be able to where you should live a lot longer but it's all pre-designed by global elite matter of fact bill gates is having a secret meeting this week with a bunch of people discussing that even o- even oprah the crystal freak you know, she believes in crystals and all. She believes she's a god. And yet, she's not a god because she's going to really know when a god throws her in hell along with everybody else that follows that mess. But anyway, you know, they can believe whatever they want. But, you know, the truth will be revealed one day. But the thing is, you know, they're all having a secret meeting on how to deplete the earth of the population because they think they're put really in place to kill people. Really, to, put, to kill people. This ain't no conspiracy. Bill Gates is having a meeting this week. It's, it's just that nobody's covering it. Because they don't think it's important, but it is important. It's discussed the future of humanity. Like they're God, when really they're not no God. And there's other people meeting with them too, a secret meeting. I mean, this is crazy. And then we got the Bilger, the Googleberg, uh, Bilderberg meeting coming up too. That's coming up in June. And that's going to be over there in London. They're going to put people on a field, I found out, where they won't be able to see all the global people come in on, in their little limousines and all. Then, you know, they're going to this top notch resort. And it has a hotel, and it's got the amenities of the world, some of the best amenities of the world is what it's known for there at this resort-like hotel. And, uh, you know, it's only the creme de creme could get in there. And, you know, if you're not one of the creme de creme and you're not a part of their club, you can't be in there. So, you know, the people that are going to be on the field, the reporters think, oh, that's a good idea, but they're not going to see anything. And they'll be heavily policed and groped up and down. And that's what I want to talk about. You know, 
Our freedoms are at stake, people. They've been they've been taken away from us for more than forty years. You know, this has been going on way before Obama. This ain't something new. Usually, you can't blame it all on Obama. Obama's just a handpicked pocket puppet. And he knows it, and he and he even admitted that he has to do things what he's told to do by other forces. He didn't say what they were, but that's what he was alluding to in his talks when he says stuff. He tells you what he's doing, and he tells you exactly the truth if you listen. Because what he says is the opposite of what he does. And if you can get that down, then you know exactly where Obama's going. And you know what his agenda is. You just got to listen to all the noise. But he tells you every time he speaks. It's not what he actually says. But it's the opposite of what he says is what he does. And then once you know that, then you know you got a hand on it. You can decrypt the code. That's only supposed to be for certain people in the government or certain classes of people like the elitist. Let him know that he's on to them and trying to do their plan to, ple- to please them so he talks in code. And it doesn't. they think it just goes over <whistles> our heads like we don't get it. But I get it all. I got it. I got it. I hear it. I watch it. Alex Jones got it. We all got it. And the thing is, you know, when we have people groping us up and down to airports, that's not freedom. That's, that's tyranny. When we have people, you know, uh, putting up checkpoints... For no reason, that's tyranny. That's not freedom. You know, when there's no border or anything. Or like, when we have people going into people's houses like they did last week, I think it was Friday, where a policeman in California went into a house and tasered somebody, and they were doing everything they were told to do. The police still went in there because they told them, well, you, you don't have a grounds to come in here. You don't have a warrant. There's no reason for you to come in here. Everything's fine, officer. They came in there and broke the door down and tasered his wife. You know, this is tyranny. They're trying to recon- they're trying to condition everybody. As a matter of fact, they're programming the kids in schools, in public schools, to get them ready to be prisonated or indoctrinated was to be conditioned to, to be like like they're in prison. Because a lot of times when you see the kids walk down the hall, they only walk down on one side of the hallway now. They can't walk down all over the hallway like they did when I was in school. Now I go to school, I see kids walking on one side while the teachers walk on the other side. It's sort of the same thing what they do in a prison. I've never been to jail, but I've seen it because I've gone to visit people and inmates when they bring them to the place where they talk to you. They walk on one side of the hallway while the deputies or wardens walk on the other. So you got to understand, that's what they're trying to do to the general population. And that's wrong. They have FEMA camp articles where they talk about putting people in FEMA camps. It was These articles released in 2011, 12, and 2010 where they want to send us away to camps, round us all up, Christians, and everyone else that you know believe that goes against what they want you to believe, to put you in these camps. And of course, they go, "Oh, that's conspiracy and all." Well, it's conspiracy. Then why are they groping people up at the airports? That was predicted many years before it happened. Or why, why was checkpoints predicted many years before they happened? If it's all conspiracy, why is it happening in America? So you got to think about that, folks. So I give you some things to think about. It's Michael Silva's May the 18th, and I want to send a good note out to everybody. Thank you for wishing happy birthday for me. I love you. And uh, thank you for all the the happy birthday messages on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I love you, and uh, God bless you. See you later. Think about what I'm saying, folks, because I wouldn't do this if I didn't care, because I really do care. And by the way, when Obama's, when, when not Obama, I'm sorry, Obama, I didn't mean Obama. I wasn't saying nothing bad, but even though, you know, at least not there, but even though... Um, Alex Jones, when he says stuff that's bad all the time, well, he has to say it like that to wake you up. It's not because he just wants to talk about doom and gloom. Those people who don't want to listen, you know, they just say he says stuff bad because they don't want to really get involved because they think, oh, it will just sort itself out. I'm just going to inject myself with a needle. I'm going to inject myself with a needle. And, you know, I'm going to put that needle in now and go to la-la land and it'll all sort itself out because the government's good. The government's my, my mommy and daddy. And everything's going to be okay and I'm going to be safe. And that's what they want you to believe. And it's all a bunch of lies from hell. Anytime any country has been taken over and they lost all their freedoms and their rights and all their order to live in society, it's never going to be ever the same if it gives in to tyranny. Never. And don't let them say that security is is the reason and purpose for for tyranny. Because that's another lie. We don't, we're no more secure today than we were 12 years ago when they introduced Homeland Security. We're nowhere seriously. It's not my opinion. I have facts. I have, there's, there's news about it all over the internet. It's public. 
you know, both the world media before it got bought out by Warren Buffett and by the government, you know, they reported on this stuff before that. And, you know, even Alex Jones talked about it. And even other, Drudge and everybody, they reported. So there's many sources that say this. We're no more secure today than we were 12 years ago. So you think about that, folks. So don't give it, don't sell your freedoms and rights away. Remember, if you don't exercise your freedoms and liberties, you will lose them. I love you. Take care. Peace. See you tomorrow.